Um, the, what, the bulk of what I've been looking for in the, if you really want to call them anti-cancer foods, um, you can't look any better place than right over here to cruciferous vegetables. So exactly what's included in cruciferous vegetables, which is like the super powerful anti-cancer foods. It totally is. So crucifers, or what I go to call cruciferous vegetables, which are crucifers, are, and as you're familiar with kale and bok choy and Brussels sprouts and broccoli and cauliflower and so forth, there's, there's, there's two major compounds in cruciferous vegetables that detoxify hormones and toxins, and it actually uh, modifies the, the liver's ability to, to uh, modify or change your estrogen and progesterone levels. So they showed through research that cruciferous vegetables can reduce certain, certain chem, chemical compounds in the, in the body that creates disease. And they also showed that cruciferous vegetables actually change hormones in the body to actually inhibit or decrease cancer growth. It's pretty powerful. So I've been living on cruciferous vegetables. Now, the thing is, is that what can you do with them? And cauliflower, you know, and also if you're not feeling so well, he, Rob does a cauliflower mash. Now, I, I hearken back to 20 years ago when Julia Child came on Good Morning America, and she said, and she did mashed potatoes like three ways, and she was putting different things in mashed potatoes, and she said, this one right here, Joan, is, is half cauliflower, half mashed potatoes. And if you just keep changing it, pretty soon your kids at home are gonna be eating mashed cauliflower and they'll never know the difference. And they'll think they're eating mashed potatoes. Um, so this is so simple to do and you can explain it. So a lot of people have a little difficulty with chopping up a, a uh, cauliflower head, if you will. So basically what you're gonna do is take the leaves off, if anybody's interested. You take the leaves off. Now the next thing that you want to do is really just cut down the center. So you see the stem, see? Because you want to keep the stem. Don't throw it away. You can also do it again in, in fourths, and it's so easy just to actually slice through the stem, and you have your, your broccoli florets, if you will. So just by doing that, then we boil them. Yeah, put the stems in first, because I've been doing this all summer. Like just in a little bit of water, put the stems in first because those take a little bit longer to cook, and then put the, the, the rest of the cauliflower over it, and you just let it cook until it gets all kind of soft and mushy, and you can use like an immersion blender or whatever you want. You can use a fork, you know, seriously. Yep. I didn't have an immersion blender up here, so I mean, I just mash it up with my fork, and then you can put a little salt and pepper into it. And I don't use butter anymore, so I use something, what's it called? Earth Balance. Earth Balance. So here's another trade out that I think you can make in your house. My husband's here, so now he's gonna hear that I did this. <laughs> he thinks that there are actual, like still, you know, uh, regular butter uh, in the butter dish, but it's really not butter anymore. It's actually, Earth Balance, and you get it, at, I mean, I got mine at Whole Foods, but look for it, it's, it, t it tastes exactly like butter. And I guarantee you, you can make this trade out in your house and no one will ever know the difference. Uh, and you Do can you put a little- taste? Sure. So, am I so, passing this around? Oh, there we go. Oh, there so we now go. you're gonna get your little taste of cauliflower mash and this is a trade out, just be careful of this camera right here in the center, guys. Um, you're, and it's like eating mashed potatoes, except instead of eating mashed potatoes, which basically is giving you no nutritional value whatsoever, you're just, you just have a little something fluffy there to put butter onto. Now you're eating a cruciferous vegetable, which is an anti-cancer food. And what is an anti-cancer food? It's something that inhibits the growth of cancer cells in your body. And we just remember that the more weight you have on you, all the estrogen in your body is stored in the extra weight, the extra fat in your body. Fat is the storage container 
for estrogen. So anyone that's kind of watching themselves and not wanting to get breast cancer, uh, mind you, my breast cancer is not driven by estrogen, but still, most breast cancer is. So you want to look for ways to make these trade-offs and get rid of the things that are going to add weight to you and start making the, the smart choices that are going to change the terrain inside your body and on the outside of your body. We're and I love I'm proud of you with the terrain. Thank you very much. I've been listening. I, you, absolutely. And Joan's got mm. the determination mm. of a Navy SEAL, if you haven't noticed. It's phenomenal. I do. <clears throat> so the cruciferous vegetables, again, as, as Joan mentioned, as an anti-cancer compound. But for anybody uh, going through premenopause, menopause, or just any time in their life, cruciferous vegetables actually modify the hormones in the body to make them a little, little less harmful. So if there's any hormone-based issues that you may be having, consider your cruci cruciferous vegetables a day. And two, big, two or three big servings of crucifers a day, whether it's cabbage or, or cauliflower, um, uh, as Joan mentioned, and Brussels sprouts and so forth, has four to 600 milligrams of uh, a compound called indole-3-carbinol, which actually helps you detoxify things in the liver, helps you get rid of cancer, and makes the terrain unfavorable, and helps you detoxify unwanted hormones. So this recipe is so easy. All you need is a pot of water, a knife, and some cauliflower, salt, and pepper. So you basically cut it up, uh, you boil it until it gets a consistency or mushiness that you want. So you take it out, put it in a, in a, in a, uh, a pan or bowl, and you can start mixing it, as Joan said, a little salt, pepper to taste, and a little earth balance if you like that creaminess. Now the earth balance, get the soy free. Soy free, I don't know how you, how you all feel about soy, but some of the research is saying that the fermented soy is okay, the unfermented soy is not okay. So soy milks, and you may want to steer away from that a little bit, but the Earth Balance has no soy in it, so it's a healthful oil. It's a healthful creamy substance you can add to things. He had me change from regular milk to almond milk, and unsweetened almond milk. It was the easiest change I've ever made in my life. Um, do you want to talk about why you, we shouldn't be drinking cow's milk? Sure. Go are, ahead. Are you ready? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> it's funny, when, when I first uh, ch uh, was talking with Joan and we give uh, public lectures and we're out speaking, as soon as I say at the beginning, how many people drink milk or eat dairy, most, most hands go up. And when I ask if there's any nutritional benefit, what's the one thing people think milk gives you? The research shows that cow's milk gives you very little absorption of calcium because of all the hormones, insulin growth factors, and things that are in it. So it's kind of a marketing thing, but dairy itself is not healthful. So when we say go from a, 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 an animal dairy to a nut milk, as providing you don't have any nut allergies and so forth, think about almond milk unsweetened. Think about coconut milk unsweetened, right? So you don't get the extra sugars. Or hemp milk or something like that if they have that aller if you have a peanut allergy. Yep, good point. So if there's any nut allergies, just be careful. You'll, you'll know who you are. But uh, <clears throat> cow milk really isn't that helpful. And if I can get you to think about three foods to, to stay away from as far as your health, four things, or I call them three and a half foods. It'd be grain, dairy, and sugar, and partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. So think about it this way, as Joan and I, we, we laugh about it, it's we're the only species that drink milk as adults and it's not even our own. And so you may have heard terms like precocious puberty where there's six foot four young boys now and 13 year old girls that look like they're 30. Oh yeah. <clears throat> there's eczema and autoimmune diseases and type one diabetes and the research really is clear and this is what we'd like to bring to the public is the research that people don't hear that dairy is really an unhealthful food source. So we laughed because we talked about lactose intolerance. And Joan says, well, I don't, I don't really get that. And some people do. And we talked about it a little bit. And how many people are lactose intolerant? And it's OK, because I am. It's normal. And right? why? <laughs> because we're not supposed to be drinking the food source of another mammal. And after weaning, we're not supposed to be drinking breast milk from a 1,400-pound mammal. So if you're lactose intolerant, that's normal. How many people in here are water intolerant? Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> milk doesn't do a body good 